What have you there? What have you there? Where have you there? Welcome to United Real Therapy Therapy Army. Let's be having ya. Um, what a crazy game again. It's like we want just Liverpool and Manchester United to play each other every week because it's just some weird things happening that you don't see in, your, in other football games. So big up for Alad coming back on. Check out Club Club Talk TV. Uh, boy, 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 boy. Right. Let's go. I can hear noise in the background. Mute yourself, sir. Mute yourself. Uh, can you mute yourself? <laughs> I'll mute you. I'll do can it for you. Mute you. Quickly. There you go. I've muted you. Big up to you. Um, big up to everybody. Please smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. I didn't go to the game again. I didn't. I've not been feeling well. Fasting's Ramadan, and I just felt not a lot of energy. It was pissing down in Manchester. So I was just like, you know what? I need to take it easy. Um, had a long week last week. So anyway, I'll say this coming to that. What a game. What a game in terms of the chaos, the suicide football at Manchester United play. I call it the basketballification of football of Manchester United tactics. Uh, what it just looks like is crazy how the game goes and what it looks like. So, uh, how are you feeling? Uh, um, first half, first half, tell me the first half. After the first, first half. Two, yeah, first half. First half, I think frustrated more than anything. Had a lot of chances. I think that first 10, 15 minutes, I think a little bit chaotic. Um, and it wasn't the start that I kind of wanted because I think, you know, a few of the players in Bradley sort of smashed into Rashford. You go and pit, you know, misplaced passes, you know, a few things like that didn't quite work in our favour in the first 15 minutes. But the amount of chances when we sort of seemed to get our rhythm, we weren't forcing the chances, but we were forced like the last hurdle, we were just falling short and very, very big chances missed. Uh, I just think it kind of shot ourselves in the foot when you look at it from, um, you know, a lot larger scale, I think. That first half in particular, we had opportunities to go and win the games. So we only have ourselves to blame, I think, for not doing so. But credit out to go to United. I think um, weathered the storm and uh, capitalised and took their chance as well in the second half. But yeah, first half frustrating because we had opportunities there to go and uh, kill the game and we, we didn't. Yeah, it's interesting. Do you think it's more about... We said it yet last night, didn't we? We said it on this channel. We said that Manchester United would have to play the occasion. And Liverpool will have to try to play the game. You know what I mean? Not the occasion, but the game. Yeah, sure. Do you think, are we just that kind of a street fighter? Like, you know what I mean? Like boxers. You know what I mean? One of them is a street fighter. One of them is a proper technical, you know what I mean? Well-coached yeah. like, fighter. And then it just gets into a scrap. Do you think you were falling into that trap in the in the, in the the last two games? Do you think you yeah, for sure. Trap, for or? sure. For sure. I think if it if it goes to a football football match, I think... You know, respectfully, I think, you know, we kind of pick, pick you know, some of the deficiencies off and we kind of put it to bed. But I think when you sort of engage in a scrap and you've got the circumstances around the home atmosphere and when, when you're winning these 50-50s and when you're winning these duels and you're getting these small wins, they build and they build and they build. And it's like a snowball that just constantly is picking up speed and pace and momentum and it just ramps up the crowd. And I felt we were, we were victims of that. Um, throughout the first half and, you know, in the second half as well. Um, but I think there were periods in the game, I think, when we did take the sting out of the game and that's when we had our best football. But the only thing that was lacking and evading us was that final output. And, you know, on another day, you know, we, we score those chances. But as you as you said, you know, both the cup game and the league game, we've fallen fit short of, you know, being clinical on another day. I mean, you probably when you watch Liverpool as well. You know some of the chances we had. You, you'd anticipate us to finish them off on another given opportunity, but yeah, frustrating. Yeah, big up Lesso. Lesso, what did you see about the game? What what was your what, what was your match reaction? And then we'll go to Sean. And then I want to talk to you about the second half, uh, Alan. So go ahead, Lesso. I don't know, man. Um, like I said, you know, in the match preview, um, it's going to be a weird game. Um, honestly, like, still, we can sit here and we say we did not stand a chance, but 
I feel like it was more Liverpool being poor than us applying our game, you know, to to its exact uh, maximum. You know, um, we know that we are very poor as a football team. You know, we we have our own issues, and I feel like you know we just helped, and 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 so in 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 that uh, circumstances that Liverpool also had like their fair share, you know, of the of of their own problems. Because I feel like if we're if we if we're hundred percent and Liverpool hundred percent, Liverpool always gonna win every single time. So it's just I feel like there's a lot of circumstances put into this. Um, you know, Liverpool had a lot of injuries. There had a lot of games that they had to undergo. We had an international break. Let's not forget that. So it's a lot of factors that um, went in 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 like in. In a in a positive way for 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 us, Man United more than Liverpool in a way, and and that's how you manage to actually uh, scrub the game, you know, <laughs> in our favor. But you know, um, it is what it is. Um, I'll take the point, but I'm still not happy with where we're going forward. You know, um, I still I, I'd say I still want majority of these players gone. I still want the manager gone as well. I still, um, if those things can be sorted out and we bring in efficiency, because what I look for going forward is efficiency um, in how we recruit and, and what type of manager we get in, what type of style of play we bring in and we introduce to the rest of the players. If we don't do any of those things, then it's what I'm saying that it would not matter. So um we will see um how Ineos react to any of of our pre, like our uh season prof, uh, performances you know um especially this season i'm not talking about last season uh combination of last season th- this season but primarily the season's performances but liverpool um i think it's a lot of factors you know um you know they the club just announced that he's not going to be here so you know, a lot of players. It's it's a lot of anxiety from the, from the players. You know, they they want to try and give Klopp the the, the best hura. You know, going into the following season, and that's 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 just that's it. You know, we managed so we managed to take advantage of that, and that's how we got um, the points that we got. But yeah, yeah, big up. Uh, go ahead, Sean. How did you see the game? I'm I'm guessing very different to me. Ex- ex- extremely to, different. You, to, you guessed to right. Go, to, to Alan, ex- ex- to go extremely ahead. different. I, I really dislike this narrative. I, I, I really dislike this narrative that treats football as maths, where somebody says, if we're 100% and Liverpool are 100%, they're definitely going to win. That That's just not true. That's not the way football works. Um, the moment the whistle blows at 90 minutes, it's up in the air. It's up to the football gods' um, vibes block and how much each play each team wants it what are the game i saw today um people can pretend as if you know i think you were doing when you dm'd me you said liverpool could have scored four or five that's literally the way football is all the shots on target are possible goals so at any at any given point in time you could always say a team could have scored xyz but they didn't we scored two wonderful goals they scored a, a penalty that was not a penalty as far as i'm concerned um, because the ref was biased. And and even though Liverpool dominated large parts of the first half, I think in the second half, we also as in, we were competitive in this game. Um, I don't think we got a point by luck. Um, and I'm and I'm here and I will argue against anybody who puts that forward. We we're competitive in the game. Um, as far as I'm concerned, we had chances basically to win. We could have won it, if not that Wambisaka had a, you know, basically like a, a mental break at that point in time that caused him to, to have that tackle. Um, something about the left, part, left back position with Dalo against Chelsea. And now Amisaka, you know, just causes these guys to have like a bit of a mental breakdown and they have moments where they like spaz out essentially. Um, but the game I saw today for me was encouraging. Um, I, I, I asked guys to look out for Kambala today and I was impressed with what I saw from Kambala. I was impressed with what I saw from um, Diogo Dalo, impressed with what I saw from Onana. Um, Casemiro is a write-off, you know, that, that that's the whole story with him. We need to move him on. Um, but Kobe Mayano looks good. Um, Kobe Mayano, even though he was, even though he was in his best game, that quality is still there. It's still just there. Garnacho, hungry, ready to attack. Hoyland, hungry, ready to attack. Anthony Kimon was hungry, 
today. Messi Mount came in was hungry today. You can't compare this United team that is struggling with a Liverpool who, if we're, if we're keeping it in the buck, if we're keeping it in the buck, the trophy that Liverpool won is probably the worst, least credible trophy um, the Premier League because there were no fans in in the stadium, you know, it was a horrible season. That was the season that we came second under, you know, Ole Gunnar Soxia. So, you know, why, why are we even, why are we treating this Liverpool team like like they are some, you know, magnificent, um, um, wonderful football club? We were competitive today, as far as I'm concerned, and I liked what I saw from the United team, given the context of where we've been this season and everything that we've been through. I feel like, you know, for the mere fact that we were able to, after after what we saw first half. We're able to come back into the game in the second half. We're able to take control for some parts of the second half, score two goals, you know, look like we were in cruise control, basically, if not for what happened with Kamisaka. Um, I think there's a lot for United fans to take from this game. And I would encourage people not to be like reflexively, like, you know, in the same posture we always are, um, um, anti Ten Hag, anti the team, and all of that. There's a lot for us to take forward from this game. Um, um, the difference between the rubbish we've seen in that part of the season and what we saw today is that the players wanted it. And it's pretty clear that if Ten Hag gets a team of players that are all, you know, responsible and play for him, we can go toe-to-toe with any of these teams in the Premier League. Because as far as I'm concerned today, for some parts of the game, we match Liverpool with aggression. We pin them back in their own half, at least for like the first 15 or 20 minutes of this game. Um, That is the blueprint of what Ten Hag wants to do. Whether or not we're able to sustain it for 90 minutes is a different story. Um, but Jurgen Klopp basically almost had an aneurysm um, um, today because he was shook. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. And then he's so salty that after the game, he's all like, well, if United play like this against Liverpool, against Arsenal, Arsenal will definitely win. Go to hell, Klopp. Um, he should cry more. Um, he's going to end. He, he, if, he's not, if, he's not, if he's not careful, he might end this season, his last season at Liverpool, trophyless. Um, so he should cry more. Uh, I'm here for all the Liverpool tears. And I would encourage United fans not to pretend like, not to pretend like you know um, this United team just washed up basically today and 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 rode their luck. Um, we were competitive. Um, a draw was a fair reflection of the game, um, as far as I'm concerned. And people should give the manager, I would say, some more credit and some of the players in the team um, some more credit. Okay, Sean. That is, uh, you're going, like I said to you last time, you're going to make a fantastic politician, man. I can't wait to vote for you. <laughs> I, I'm actually going to learn a lot of communication directives from you, how to spin an absolute crap football from Manchester United. I love the way you ignore the structural, how structurally that we set up, how we're, we're, we're making schoolboy mistakes. I agree with you today. Maguire was good. I, I, I have been praising Maguire in terms of the aggressiveness. I think Kimbala was man of the match for me because to come into a game like this with all that emotion and to perform the way he performed and to try to get the crowd involved, him and Kobe understand that aspect of it, like getting the crowd involved. Um, that, they, that They were good. So Diego lot was good. Kobe was decent after the drop. Obviously, we said after the high of England and all the circus around him, it was a dip at... Uh, Brentford, it was a dip at Chelsea. Today, a large part, he was giving the ball away. I think he's fatigued, me personally, and he's an emotional thing as well, at least being, uh, at, being at this age. But other than that, I thought we were absolutely woeful, woeful. And there was a space from about 15 or 17 minutes onwards till the end of the half. Liverpool had chance after chance after chance. Yes, Unana made one or two good saves. The one that he made from Sobaslai was a decent save. But it, it, the game was about Liverpool's lack of finishing, more about Manchester United playing as a team. But I'll come back to you, so mute yourself. I want to get to Jarvis and Luani. Jarvis, give me your match mm-hmm. reaction. Big up to everybody. Yeah. Please put a like on the video. Let me just get this quickly. Sean is Ten Hag fan. Hag <laughs> fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the game today, you know, was the first half. I don't know. I don't know what to say about the first half. Liverpool came out. They were the better team. Uh, they played to their ability. They were super aggressive. They were putting in high intensity, high press. And um, uh, I think they were really good. Uh, our midfield was, uh, was uh, again, trying the hot potato game. Every time we had the ball, we were uh, stressed out. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, yeah, 
we, maybe we should have been down uh, two nil, three nil at halftime. Uh, second half, uh, everything changes because of the bad pass and and the Bruno goal. Uh, suddenly the momentum shift and we we got the game into our hands. Old Trafford was buzzing. Everybody got their energy back. I think Liverpool uh, lost a little bit of their energy because it, it cost them a lot to have to keep the high intensity for the first four, forty five minutes. Uh, and then they continued with the first 10 minutes of the second half, and then we had the goal, and, and everything fell to place for us. Um, in a way, I think um, we were really lucky to get that goal, of course, but uh, when we first got it, we took our chance and, uh, and uh, created a, a little bit of momentum and pressure on Liverpool. Uh, the Kobe Mainu goal was fantastic, um, but uh, then Liverpool uh, came to to their senses and, and started to play ball again. Ten Hag again did some uh, in-game management. Uh, he subbed off Garnacho, for example, was our biggest threat and um, and our our counter-attacking transitional threat. And he put on Amrabat. So suddenly we we we, we came even deeper in on the pitch. And uh, and uh, then Liverpool's pressure uh, amounted into a penalty. I don't think he had a touch on uh, on Elliot Fambisaka's legs. You know, Elliot uh, uh, dragged his foot and seeked Fambisaka laying on the ground. So if VAR had checked that, it wouldn't have been a goal in my opinion. But they didn't. So uh, the game ended two two. Uh, I think we should be happy with that result because uh, Liverpool were totally dominating us. The XG of the game was, I think, 3.5 to Liverpool. And um, yeah, I'm just going to check. It's 3.59 to Liverpool and 0.71 to us. So uh, all in all, I think we should uh, be lucky with uh, with the result, feel lucky with the result. I'm not happy with the, with the way we performed. I think we, we still have the same structural issues. There was a big gap in the middle. Liverpool just uh, carried the ball through, uh, through our midfield every time. Casemiro was all alone. Everybody uh, gave uh, Casemiro the stick today. But uh, again, I don't think it's on Casemiro. I think it's on uh, the structural uh, setup from Ten Hag and how we play. So it's, it's very difficult for, the, for uh, one man to... to to uh, defend all of the width of the pitch, plus the huge gap, the stretch of the length of the pitch. It's almost impossible. So uh, in a way, I, I'm not even blaming Casemiro. So uh, I don't know what Ten Hag is trying to do and uh, and uh, what he wants to do. But I'm very curious to to listen to, to the Liverpool supporters' take on this game because uh, I think it's very hard to play against this Man United team because we are ultra direct and we are extreme in transition so there's always a threat when we win the ball so so you're never comfortable playing against man united even though if you uh, have the the total possession and you have the pressure in the game you never know what's going to happen so so that i will give to ten hag i can i can see more and more what he's trying to do I can't, and I'm not going to lie to you, uh, I, I can't because it's too much, too much in terms of we haven't got the ball. And the difference between, I'll come back to you, Alad, quickly before we go to Bumbaye and Fluani first and Bumbaye, is the fact that, it's the fact that if Liverpool, Liverpool are also high octane team, high pressing, high energy team, right? Between Liverpool and Man City is that Man City punish you. Man City will punish you because of the structural setup they have and the way their players are coach. I'm not saying that club is a bad coach. They just don't have the level of quality as mm -hmm. Man City do because of the what Man City can do and how they hoard into some of the best technically sound footballers. When I look at um, Mohamed Salah's coming back of injury, actually that's the fittest he's looked out of all the games that I've seen since he's come back from his, in his injury. That's the sharpest. You, um, Salah is not the kind of guy who, after a lot of quiet months out, to come back straight away. Certain players are like that. Same thing with with Hoyland, actually. Hoyland, we, we're finding out now, as the United fans, he can't come back straight. He needs four or five games to get up to speed. But today, he looked like up to speed to me, Salah, in certain aspects of it. But you can tell, Elad, that the touch is still missing. That touch, he's taking too many touches. Other than that, you know, the most Salah of last season, he would just bend it, bang, go, go. And then I see Diaz. Diaz wants to the ball. So he's got Endeavour energy. But if you had Jota today, or no one ever lies. We win that game. You win that game because he finishes. But go ahead. Second half on what you thought about the second half. Go ahead. 
And then Second half, the um, yeah, kind of ruin our missed chances in the first half, I think. Um, as you said, I mean, when you touch on Salah, I think he either takes too many touches or sometimes, uh, you know, I think there was a few he snatched at today. And it's like, I think Klopp was bellowing him at one point, going, take a touch, because he had time in the box and, it, you know, he could have uh, had, had a proper swing at it. But I think at the end of the day, if you're talking about the second half, I think started relatively okay, I think. You know, United come into their own and when they score those two goals in quite quick succession, it really pinned us back. And you, you, that, that's that's what I was saying. You know, that when you get the crowd up and you get those little wins in the first half of those 50-50s, when you meet that aggression that Liverpool were imposing, when you make it difficult and when you bring the atmosphere into the equation, it's only a matter of time before United really flex their muscles. And that's what they did in the second half. To, um, I mean, that could be main new goal was, you know, re- really impressive. Kwanzaa obviously um, didn't have the best of games, I think. Uh, and, you know, Fernandez anticipated it well. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, we sort of re-established our groove in that, towards the back end of the game. But I think we had shot ourselves in the foot in the first half. And then when, you know, we get the opportunity to... Um, you know, make it level again. Salah dispatches that penalty, uh, but of course, too too little, too late. I think. Um, so yeah, very very much disappointing. I think. Yeah, big up, big, big up to Luani brothers. Uh, there's about how many of us here? There's what six or eight of us in here. So we're gonna make our uh, points succinct, so everybody everybody has a chance to go around and to say more to analyze the game. So go ahead, yeah. brother. Hey, good evening, my brothers. How are you doing? Good evening, Can you hear me? Happy to okay. see you, King. Happy to see you all the way in New hey, York. Happy to see you as well. So, guys, uh, when I turn when I turned on my TV, it was mini three, and um, I saw that I saw us going at them, and I thought, okay, it's gonna be one of those games today that the crowd was behind us and it's gonna fuel us to victory. But after a time, Liverpool took control of the game, and it was just a one side business all the way to the to the to the to the end of the half because at the end of that half if you look we were in the worst out of in the worst statistical um, um business ever because if you look at their shot attempt on goal we had zero attempt on goal to their 15. okay so it was a complete total domination so when uh, after the half when we came back it was all the same until they couldn't hit the band door I, I honestly think that the, we owe our survival today to the fact that Liverpool strikers were not clinical. I don't. I think they most of them. I think they all three of them, Diaz, Salah, and Nunez, are volume strikers. So based on that, we 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 were able to survive. But the kind of team that we are, it seems like we are like adrenaline junkies. We like to play on the uh, the crowd hype is like a rocket fuel for us and once that wear off or once a team take away that initiative from us they just you know total dominate we don't we don't have anything else apart from that you know and that's uh that's one thing that that's not going to take us to to champions league uh semi-final it's not gonna take it's not gonna be take us to consistent top four uh, top four appearances, and that's where I stand. Uh, Bombay, give us your match reaction, and then we'll go to our brother. Putty Chips, big up. Go ahead, Bombay. Some my ears like Liverpool strikers. Just in action. <laughs> Bombay, are you there? No, you properly. I don't Yo. Know. Yeah, are you here? Evening, everyone in the chat. Evening, panel. Evening. To the panel. Re um, Palestine, first and foremost. I really enjoyed that game. Um, I thought first seven minutes, Ali alluded to it last night. Uh, come out fast. Come out to compete. So the reality of that game is we're shit. What we have is the ability to transition quickly and to cause problems 
I always felt, irrespective of how dominant Liverpool did get, um, that we were always in that game. And if you look at our WhatsApp chat, I said at halftime, we can get back into this game. We might even win it. I just felt looking at the game that we were in that game. Um, what I liked about us today, man, we were competing. We set the mark early. Then, yes, they did take control because Liverpool are not exception to the rule. They're going to have all the chances that everyone else has against us because of the way we're set up. But I can't say we had any passengers today. Um, everybody put a shift in, but they're a better side than we are. Um, and I think they'll be disappointed with Darwin Nunes today. I think their front line, they should be a little bit disappointed with that. But you know what? It's a hard fought point, man. And the lads, in terms of the aggression, it was a lot of good tackles, man. The referee today let it go and a lot of crunching tackles kind of back in the old days. You don't see that a lot in Premier League, and I enjoyed that aspect of it. Mm. Uh, we did put a shift in. I can't I can't um question the application of the boys, but our quality and the way we're set up just makes us susceptible to what we were seeing happen and this is a top side but today if they score yes it's a different game but you know what they didn't score and we were always in that game um you know given what we are I, I walk away with that thinking okay boys you know well done um but we still are if you go back to Eric Ten Hag now it's you know we are what we are because of the work that we haven't done in the past but in terms of application and turning up I thought we were there you know Big up. Mm-hmm. Put your trips. The only man who's <laughs> happy tonight. He's happy. Are you, be, are you happy? Are you happy or what? Um, about? I'm happy. I could have been better if uh, uh, Man United were able to hold on to that lead. But I'm going to take whatever I can get. Uh, if Liverpool, before this game, obviously because of their point advantage, they had one hand on the cup. cup, cup. They had one hand on the trophy because they were controlling their dest- destiny. Arsenal have fingertips right now. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to see uh, where they can go with it. From a game stance point, you know, I said what I said uh, yesterday. You had to play the occasion. And I felt that's what Man United did. First 10 minutes, it was both in pure energy from everyone. But what I would say, for me, it felt like the whole FA Cup game all over again. Liverpool were playing the better football as expected. High line, Van Dyke, Kwanzaa, all of the back, Robertson, uh, Bradley, they were pretty much in your half all the time. At one point, I felt like the whole Liverpool team were in Man United's half, just waiting for the recovery of the position and uh, you know, turning into a new attack. What I will say is, after my thoughts were going in, um, sort of after the one go, uh, one nil. Man United just keep need to keep it to one nil, just keep the score as low as possible. Going to that half, uh, for me, for me, is kind of a foreboding, sort of shadowing thing in terms of Salah just kept him. For me, Salah had maybe one clear cut chance to score, or more than half a chance to score, and two very good chances. For me, that's three chances in total Salah had to score in that game. And for me, if that was Salah of two or three years ago, I feel like he would have scored it. Scored one of those. He just missed. And what was quite funny was... Do you not think so? Okay, you can talk about it in a second. No, 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 no. no. I'm, Nunes... I'm talking about this comment. Oh. So, so Sorry, yeah, I'm talking oh. about this comment. He's not. Oh, sorry. Nunes is a fantastic player. He's still young. He's still developing. But boy, mm. I would love to have him at Manchester United. He's not. I... I was go just ahead, about bro. to go into Nunes. I was just about Nunes had this really good chance. Obviously, right. there was one chance right in the beginning. He was at the edge of the box or just inside it, and he took a shot. And he showed quite good technique, to, sort of relatively on target, but he just went above the post. But coinciding, Kobe Mainu from kind of similar position, edge of the box or just inside the box from one of the sort of right left angles, he managed to score. And to me, sometimes there are certain players, Kobe Manu, he's gifted, he's born with that talent. He's got that technique. He doesn't, I don't think he's necessarily been taught it. And it's something, some certain players, they're just naturally gifted. For me, the danger is Kenten Hag. If he, if he does stay on beyond this summer, can he make Kobe Manu re- reach his potential to his maximum? Or not, I think 
you need to think about because there are some players in that, like the likes of Ganacho, Kobe Mainu. I don't know if Dalot is going to be staying or not, but these players need a good manager that can coach them and take them to the next level because I'm not sure Ten Hag can do it right now. For me, it was, it was some of those key players. Ganacho's first half, his energy, what he was able to do, he was very unlucky on the offside. I think on another occasion he stays on side and he and he gets that goal and it would have been a one nil and that could have potentially changed the whole dynamic as well. But I think Man United did very well considering how the media, everyone else was hyping them to get battered, to lose. Even a lot of Man U fans, even some of my own Man U friends, they were saying there's no point doing a Liverpool Man U combined eleven. It's all going to be Liverpool players. I'm sorry, but this game just proved derbies don't matter. There are certain players like Mainu who are the future of Man United. It needs to be recognised as soon as possible by senior management, the board, so you can get the right people in, the right manager in to take these players to this next level and they're not wasted. That talent cannot be wasted. Yeah, big up. Big up. What am I? What I'm, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. Listen, the biggest thing for me, what I saw from this game today, is that Manchester United had the fighters, like, you know what I mean, kind of look. We have the fighters look. You know, like I said, I said it before and I'll say it again. It's like if you ever watched a boxing game where you got a technically su supreme fighter and then you got a street fighter. <laughs> we brought Liverpool back down to our level in terms of the way we fought. But in terms of structurally, I don't, uh, Jarvis, honestly, other than the high transitional game, I don't see what you see. It's just, I don't know what it is. I think it's the nerves of going to Old Trafford. I really think that. I think these Liverpool players, um, I, I think Max, uh, Sadio Mane will not be asked. The, the team that they had when they beat us 5 0, they will not be asked about their atmosphere because they've been there and mm. been there. But mm. this team is a new midfield. And then you've mm. got this combination three up, up the front. It's like a new. But Jota wasn't. Jota is the most clinical for me. He is. Yeah. He's, he's, he's yeah, the most exactly. clinical out of all those players. So, I just, I just see. I think it was the energy of the Stratford end as well. People talk about Anfield crowd. When Old Trafford starts pumping, it's deafening. I promise you, it's deafening in there, and it gives the players energy. Last season, you remember so many games. We coached the players through so many games last season. Um. So yeah, but Nuri didn't. But Nuri didn't. It, it wasn't. But let me just it, say this. Let me just say. Let me just finish the sentence. We we would push the the game like in so many games. I remember last season. It was the Liverpool game. It was the City game. It was the fans. I was in no stadium. Trust me, especially the City game. I was outside mm. protesting for the Liverpool game last season when you beat us when we beat them two one. But it's the big games, the big occasions. Old Trafford can just give this boost of energy and chaos and madness. In terms of, because United fans want to attack, they want they want aggression, they want people in people's faces, and that's the only way Manchester United were getting something out of this game today. So I was quite surprised that Liverpool uh, still got caught into that trap again. And then I, I look at Elliot and I see how much control he brings, Elliot. And just to trace the point that you said, Jarvis, Jarvis, when you go to ground inside the box, the way that Iaro and Basaka lunges in. When you know the player is left-footed and is nowhere going to be near the ball, and that you, you're asking the mm -hmm. referee to make a decision, right? In yeah. that, really, if we, if we got to put VAR, that would have been that's not a penalty because you know what, uh, touch doesn't mean a penalty straight away. It doesn't mean any touch in the box doesn't mean a penalty. Physical contact doesn't mean that. But the way you he goes with both feet like that with both legs, you are asking. So. To me, that's our, on Aaron Basaka. He made that mistake. It's foolish in that time of the game. Elliot is not going anywhere. There's three other players there in that area, congested area. Because by this time, United were defending deep, Elliot. So that, to me, it was a penalty. It was a penalty because you're giving the, mat, the referee the decision to make, and he shouldn't. Yeah. But Elliot, why do you think, again, that you fell into that trap again? And what did you think of Jurgen Klopp going crazy on the sidelines? At the players for Kobe Manning's goal. That was just a wonder strike. Yes, you were a bit too deep, but is he feeling the pressure? Because I'm not, he, I know that he goes crazy, but he was literally pointing. And you saw it on the pitch. 
where you saw Van Dyke and Robertson going at each other, saying, "What was he saying? What you know what I mean? Do you not think that that would took took the focus off a little bit? That he's feeling the pressure." Clock. Um, Sorry, was that for me or for Jarvis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm asking you. I'm asking you. Yeah, yeah. No, I think to be fair, um, I think he's when Kobe Mainu scored that goal. I think in particular to what you alluded to, um, Klopp was going mad, and I think ultimately, I think he is. He was feeling the pressure, and I think it's you know when you say like. But, you know, there's a new Bale midfield and I, I completely agree with you. I think ultimately when you've got a new sort of midfield, a midfield that are completely not acclimatised, well, you've got McAllister who's obviously, but, you know, I like Soboslai, um, you know, Endo as well. I don't think these players were particularly bad, but you need that experience to calm the game down. And I think they were aggressive, but to a, to a point where when you're too aggressive, it plays into the opposition's hands. And I think ultimately that gives them that extra impetus to kind of build on that sort of aggression and just utilise that to their advantage. Uh, and ultimately, when United were in a good spell, they just scored that first goal scored that second goal in quite quick succession. We were too deep for that second goal, in my opinion. Um, you know, I don't think Kobe Mainu, despite how good, despite how brilliant he dispatched that, um, should have had that much time following the turn in the box. Uh, but at the same time, it's a it's a wonder strike. You've got to give credit where credit is due. Uh, and Klopp was feeling a little bit of the pressure. And I think when, you know, Liverpool are inevitably going to get momentum then and take the game to Manchester United because there's more implications on Liverpool's season if we don't quite get the three points, that then goes on to United. So, you know, then wan Basaka, there's no need to make that challenge, in my opinion, um, because like you said, there were bodies in the back. It's probably going to get blocked. Uh, it probably would have forced it, um, and you know you probably would have got out. But um, you know the fact he goes to ground. Yes, you know I've seen the angle where it does look like Elliot's kind of waiting for that contact. But you know it, it, it is a dive. But he's given the referee a decision to make Juan Basaka by going in there. Exactly. Um, but but you that's what I'm saying to you. Juan Basaka there should know. I'm not going to give this player an opportunity to get a penalty here. Yeah, there's I'm no way he should that, be going off right? the ground. So to no me, way. I blame, yeah. I don't blame Elliot for dive, diving. I blame Juan Basaka. And United fans should blame Juan Basaka because I'm not asking a, an opposition player to do that. Bruno Fernandes will dive sometimes and you get penalties. United, yeah. United were getting penalties a certain time. It's not about the that. I, to me, I'm always mad at fans getting up, up, upset with the opposing player for diving. Yeah. But you've got to keep your cool. You've got to keep your exactly. cool. He didn't keep his cool. He got. He went to ground. There was no need to make that challenge, in my opinion. Yes, Elliot's cutting inside and creating the angle to at least the shot. But there's no need to go off the ground there. No need to go. in a bit of panic. Um, impulsive. Uh, and, you know, it's it cost you guys at the end. And I think, ultimately, when you look at the, you know, kind of weigh it up, um, I think you'll be happy of the two teams considering how many chances we had in the first half. But then again, you had a major opportunity to go and take that, that you know, you took the game to us and you had an opportunity to finish it off and, um, you know, you've fallen short there. But it definitely feels like um, two points dropped, I think, considering the chances we had to get, to, to pull the trigger and kill the game in that first half, nip it in the bud. Yeah, Honestly, I don't, in. let's, I don't let's, let's play the world. No, I don't, I don't let's play the world. Oh, yes. Yes, I, I don't really, I don't even blame Juan Bissaka on that because, um, as a defender, you know, in that kind of situation, uh, it's almost at the dying minute of the game. It happened to Dalo last week too, right? In that situation, when you have the, uh, the and this is where you should have learned from. That's no, you know, you know, you know Rudin, it's, let me tell you something. It? It's easy to say that, right? But no, I play no, as no, a, as, I, 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 let me tell you, I, I play as a left back, right? When I, in that situation, when you face the striker coming at you, you zone in. It's only you and him at that point. All you're saying is that it's the dying minute of the game. You don't want him to cut in and, and score on your watch. So at that point, the, it, it happens so fast that it's, it's, 
it come down to reflex at that point. You know, he's trying to stop uh, Javier Elliott, but Javier Elliott was faster, and he put he can he can he can take the tackle back. He put it in, and it's a gamble. You know, it's, it's something that you don't you don't even think about. You you just do it. Now, well, if Juan Bisaka is uh, is an experienced defender, then is. I can give him a no. He he's is. Not an he no, is. he's not. I'm sorry, but how long have you been a Manchester United? How long have you been a Manchester United? Crystal Palace. He's not. We didn't got him from Real Madrid. Come no, he, listen, he's, Luani, he's, I and he's Luani, still young. Luani, all due respect, bro. That I totally disagree with you. He's not young. He's not 17. He's not 18 or 19. He's 20. He's nearly 25 years old. I'm sorry to say he's played over hundreds and hundreds of games. He's at least played 300 or 400 games. 300 at least games and the fact that to me the most thing that he's not a left back so he's playing on the wrong side he's a right back play and that's a kind of tackle that you would make on the right hand side because the player would be there to try to wrap your foot here he's the left back um Elliot is on his left side he can't even see the ball but what he does he, he comes in with both feet and slides and goes to ground never because you just saw Diego the Lord do it and you do not give referees an opportunity to make the fucking decision. I but, totally disagree with that. Rodin, but, listen, every, every, no, no, every, no, 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 one second. No, 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 one second. Yeah. Diego Dalot was unlucky. He slipped. Diego Dalot slips, actually. If you look at that Chelsea game, he slips. And then he clips the player, right? This one here, when you dive in like that, no, outside of the area, yes. If you are thinking the guy's going to take the shot to, to, to affect the game, but not in the box. You don't. You don't do it in the fucking You're box. In. As a player, no. you've got to realize what's around me, not just what you hone in. No it's what's in. around me, and that's no the no best in. players do that. I'm sorry, Luani. That's totally wrong. <laughs> he is this fault. No, Luani, you're defender. reaching there with, with this no, one. No, no, no. I'm not. Yeah. Let me tell you something. As a defender, right, when you go into a tackle, you always go with the purpose of winning it, and it's a gamble, okay? When you he, don't gamble in the he, area, don't look at it. There, there we go. You said it, it's a gamble, but you don't gamble in the box. You do yeah, but there really is what Misaka like we're talking about here now. Spider Man here. So I mean, he does this. He does this yeah, regularly. He, 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 and he and does it regularly. If want that, if guys, want Elliot, that ball, Elliot, yeah, Elliot yeah, dived, yeah, and the referee, and the referee was shit. No, guys, I promise you, it's about body and and the and the, where the body is. He is in the wrong side. He is totally on the wrong side, and he's compensating with a with a lunging in the box, and he was so, totally wrong. I just so want to go to Lesso. Sean, we'll come back to you. I want to go to Lesso because I want to give everybody. I've been accused of not giving people the the, the, the fair points to get to get their point across. Um, Luan, uh, sorry, uh, Lesso, was that a penalty? Yes or no? Would you be happy with that? To me, I was fuming, and I'm still fucking fuming because you should know better. You should know better. There are certain tackles, yeah, where you think, oh, they were just unlucky. He missed time there. There are certain ones you go, you know what? I know what he was trying to do. This one, Elliot is left footed. The ball is this way. One back is challenging from that side, trying to wrap his legs up. No, not in the box. Outside the box, yes, but not in the box. Go ahead, let's go. No. You know, I agree with you. I've I've always uh, I always held that uh, sentiment. You know, when it comes to you know, you know very well, you know, uh, penalty uh, decisions. You know, and when it comes to contact and all these other things that 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 come into play, you have to be very careful. You know, you you can't just make, be making tackles. You know, when you're in the box, rather make those tackles outside of the box. When it comes to to the inbox. Uh, you know, um, tackles and everything. You have to be careful. And I've always been against this thing where players are now, you know, they let the men run free and then they want to now try and make a challenge when it's in the ball. You can't be doing that in, 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 in today's football because there's a lot of rules um, that are involved nowadays. You know, it's the, the most sensitive and most softest penalties will be given. Unfortunately, you know, according to the rules that 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 have been put, passed forward, so I've always I've I've never understood players who actually let a player get into the box, then try and make a tackle. 
Like, try and make the tackle before he even gets into the ball. Because now that you give your team a chance to avoid a penalty, you understand? So, so you'd rather deal with a free kick than a penalty. That's, that's factual. You know, and I speak for every fan. I think for every football fan out there. So it's it's just saddening. And, and I got, got pissed because we haven't learned. We knew that they give these sort of penalties um, when, when, when Chelsea got them. So why why do you think that there would, that there would be any different when it comes to this Liverpool game? You know, so um, it's, it's it's the players. The players need, just need to rise up. You know, you, you just need to understand that today's football is just different from um, it's a it's a different ball game from last year's football. You know, years years back, and yeah, it, yeah. it just. It, like it li- literally frustrated a lot of people. I don't think I don't speak for myself. I don't speak for myself. A lot of people were actually pissed off, you know, for 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 um for us conceding those soft penalties. They soft, but according to the rules, unfortunately, it is what it is, and they have to just apply by by, by the rules that they've already been given. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Big up. I'll go to Jarvis, and then we'll go to Sean, and then Bombaye. Um, yep. And then uh, chips, but uh, I thought the tactics he changed when he changed it. Manchester United were doing this helter skelter suicide football where we were actually being aggressive and up against them, and Kobe was finding himself on up the pitch in terms of the transition. Once he made those substitutions, obviously the Rashford one was forced because Rashford had something wrong with him and he had to come off. So I yep. understood that, but when he took off Kobe. I think, yeah, it's tiredness. I understand that. But something happened in our game. Of course, mm-hmm. Liverpool made the same as well. But we saw it again. The same thing we saw against Chelsea. Drop back to low to mid block. And then we let Liverpool dictate the game because we weren't in their faces as much as we were. You know, in, in, in that bit of craziness. I mean, the chance that I thought United could have gone 3-1 up and Ellen alluded to it was that Ganacho chance. When we went through and Ganacho went through, we were like, we were, I think, three against three or something like that. And the, and the ball came across and Ganacho and Bruno were on the same side. Mm. But to me, again, Jarvis, it shows that we can't take off fucking Bruno. That would have been perfect to go. And if you're going to take Ganacho, was get Ahmad on. Because Ahmad, at least, well, there have been more of a threat. But then he sticks Bruno on the left of fucking side. What does this guy ever have to do to be a substitute in the game? This is what no. I don't fucking get. I don't get this bullshit with this manager. With his tactics and with his player, why can he not be fucking substituted? Yeah, this this is the difference between uh, the league game and and the cup game because we all saw in the cup game we threw everything into attack, uh, even the kitchen sink. We put Maguire up in their eighteen yard box, and Liverpool panicked. Uh, so so we know that Liverpool uh, is not extremely composed under pressure. Uh, but we gave them, uh, we gave away the, the momentum of the game. We, we subbed off um, Rashford for Anthony. That's okay. Anthony is a little bit more defensively. He's a little bit lower, uh, lower down the pitch. But when we subbed off um, Amrabat for Ganacho, that was that was the nail in the coffin for for me because. We obviously should have uh, subbed on uh, Ahmad uh, because then suddenly we were playing with with almost in a four five one formation and we were playing deep, but we had no counter attacking threat up top. And and what what was Ten Hag actually thinking? Did he did he did he trust our defense so much that we will manage to sit back for twenty minutes against Liverpool, not conceding a goal? For me, that's delusional, and he made a big mistake. And and that's this uh, this is the things that I've been uh, extremely critical to Ten Hag and his in-game management and how he runs the game because Shocking. it it clearly impacts how the team plays his decisions and he he have cost us a lot of points this season and and he yeah. needs to learn and he needs to improve. No, I'm willing to give Ten Hag time if 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 he if he can show me something, but he, he he's so he's stubborn. J- Jarvis, when people there's a famous poet. That said, when people show you who they are, believe them. Don't make excuses for them. Go ahead, Sean. I'm going to mute myself because I don't want to. <laughs> I want to give you the fair time to express what you want to express. Sure, sure. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to start with saying I, I, I don't like this, you know, um, blame that we're putting on Wambisaka. 
I like Wambisaka. I don't want him to stop being the the expert tackler that he is. Um, I don't think you know it's entirely his fault. Um, he was unlucky. I, I think he was he was naive to an extent, basically making that tackle in the box the way he did. Um, but the refs and the Premier League is basically trying to help Liverpool win a trophy this season. So you know it's it's no surprise that they gave them that penalty. Um, against Sheffield, Van Dijk literally had his two hands around somebody's neck. Um, I was choking the Sheffield United player, something that Casemiro got a red card for, or well, I've gotten a red card for if it was anybody else. Um, and I think also we should play the smallest violin for, for Liverpool, um, having to play a, a different combination of midfield today, because that's an excuse that we would never accept from Ten Hag, who played his 26th back four combination today, and his, his 12th, I think, um, centre-back pairing. Um, today. So why, why are we giving Liverpool an excuse for the fact that they had to play a, a different midfield three today? Nonsense. Um, secondly, hind- or thirdly, sorry, hindsight is nice, but I don't like this counterfactual that Ahmad was the right sub to make instead of Amrabat and all of that. Because aside from literally that moment where Wabisaka had a brain touch, um, um, I don't think I don't think the Hag was wrong to try and see this game out. Because that's what we that's what we've been complaining about from Fortin Hag for a long time. That he's too direct. He doesn't learn. He doesn't adapt to the Premier League. He doesn't try and close up shop when he should. Last season we we considered seven 0 and yeah, everybody God, was. Just, uh, just say one thing. We couldn't yeah. keep the lead for two minutes against Brentford. We couldn't keep the lead when we were winning. <laughs> we were three two. I mean four minutes. What do you think we're gonna keep the lead? The way he sets us up for twenty minutes against one no, of but, the most. No, but then it's a question goal, of goal scoring. Then it's, it's, the it's a question of season. do you go for it if, if you're two one against Liverpool? Do you try and store and, and you know no. shore up your defense, um, no. or, or do you take you unnecessary have have risks? The, you, you listen on the break. You have to have the. You have to have the break. The. To be able to, to, to because you, you're setting up the team to counter press, and then we had the exact the same transition. chance. So let me let me finish. And you need the threat, you need the stretch threat, you need to be able to counter attack because when you're winning 2-1, they're gonna come and give everything, they're gonna come and push on you hard. So you need to be able to worry them psychologically. There's something on the break, we can get the third goal on the break. That's what he did. But we had what well, we but we had Anthony on the pitch. We had Mr. He's Mount not on the a guy pitch. that he's not a guy that runs. Anthony Anthony had the exact same chance that Ahmad had um in the FA Cup. And you know, a, a little to the right, a little to the left, and it's a goal. Um and the story is I'm different sorry, entirely. I'm Ahmad's um, technique over Anthony's any day. Ahmad's sure. technique, and that's that's Anthony's a count, that, that's a counterfactual that I can't just prove. Essentially, but no, I, majority I, I, United fans see it. I'm not lying. Uh, no, I mean, but, but of, of course, no, no, of, no, no, no. I'm, that, that, that's, the one, that's the one. That's the one. That's the one. I'm disagreeing with Nuruddin. I'm disagreeing with with the narrative that if Ahmad had come in instead of Amrabat, we will have we will have seen out the two one victory. No, no, no. I can't disprove that. There's no way. There's no way. We would okay. have had a bit more of a threat because he's more cultured than a footballer. He's one of the best footballers we have in our squad. And that's why our manager doesn't want to fucking play football. So he doesn't play. We play this sure, crazy no, fucking basketball game. So he can't because Ahmad would have to play proper football to play. And that and the other reason is that Bruno can never be fucking taken off. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. He's did you see did you today. see the last ditch tackle that Bruno did in our defense? Um, um, I, I, I think in the, in the, in the fifth or so minutes, Bruno had like a last ditch tackle in the defense. Um, far, far be it for me to be the guy to defend Bruno, but a, a lot of all this stuff, I think, is after the fact, you know, people can come and say, Oh, this should have happened, that should have happened. But, but in the heat of the moment, I don't blame the manager for bringing on Amrabat and for trying to lock up the game. That's like basic, I, th- I think it's basic one on one, one on one football, one on one. In a game like this, you try and, and get away with the 2 1 victory that you have, bring on Amrabat, try and hit them on the counter, which we had a, a few times with Anthony um, and Mason Mount on the pitch. You try and hit them on the Amrabat, counter. You bring on Amrabat for Casemiro, who was just useless. I think he might be carrying an injury because I can't imagine him going that bad, even when Ten has tactics. I can't imagine being that bad. But he was absolutely atrocious today. Casemiro so was terrible really... on the ball, but he made some crucial tackles um, 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 in the game. Uh, so, so I, I think like a lot of all this stuff, like after the fact, we want to come and say, "Oh, we should have done this. We should have done that." But I think in the Sean, moment, Sean, the manager made the right You need to watch a decisions. game with me, Sean. You need to watch a game for me. It's not after the facts. As things are happening in real time, 
I'm screaming the same thing. I'm like, why the fuck are you not taking Bruno off? I'm like, why are you not bringing Ahmad on? I'm like, why don't yeah. you take Casemiro off of, for... I tweeted at halftime, Nuruddin. At halftime, at halftime, Nuruddin. I tweeted and I said, I, I tweeted and I said, Ten Hag would be a madman. Ten Hag would be a madman to come back in second half with the exact same starting lineup because I felt like Bruno was playing shite, Casemiro was playing nonsense, and Rashford and Garnacho were terrible. And I said he'd be a madman to come with those um, same 11. And he did, and we scored 2 1. So I was okay. wrong. Um, that's the way football goes. Okay, okay, no worries. Let me just go to Mick. Mick, big up to you, Mick. <laughs> what time is it in Thailand over there? What time is it? Is it breakfast time? Brother, it's uh, 5.33, but I just want to share this funny picture. What listen, about oh, shout out to you, say, Listen, I always say Manchester United get bent over no Vaseline. That's one of the sayings that I have, yeah? But <laughs> he was ready. I did not know that our goalkeeper he literally puts Vaseline in his gloves. Why is he trying to fucking do it? <laughs> nah, 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 I don't call him on that anymore. I call it Vaseline. Mr. Vaseline yeah. himself. Dude, Nura, look, Dino, Dino, look at his face. Like he's, he looks like he's happy to finger Van Dyke. <laughs> look at that. Imagine him shaking hands after the game, like you know, thank you for the game. Like I can get away from those Vaseline hands. No, seriously. Um, dude, first and foremost, like you know, when you look at the penalty and you look at the replay and different angles, of course, there was never a pen. Um, dubious as per usual. You you have Paul Tierney, um, Liverpool. Scouts a fucking referee. They didn't even fucking check it. They didn't fucking check it. There was just direct spot penalty. But if that was United, they were fucking check it for two, three minutes. Every fucking single angle, right? If you watch it in replay, you see he's diving. He's absolutely diving. And there's like three matches in a row where we had this incident. Um, first half for me was yeah, we, we, we got off the block very well, but as, as per usual. Our midfield versus their midfield, it's, it's, it's just no match. We don't have energy in that, you know. Um, one goal from Bruno, amazing. Two goals in, in set play, the Kobe Maynard goal, amazing. They had one a goal on set piece, of course. There was a, as per usual, we can't defend the back post and a penalty, which was never a pen in my opinion. I'm happy that we put the spanner in the wheel for Klopp. I, I love to see the Scouser tears. If our top four is gone, we know it, but at least I'm happy. Like, and it feels like a win because we fucked up Liverpool today. That, that's it. But this Vaseline picture tells me everything that you need to know about this game. Yeah, they got me. They got. I'll go to. I'll go to Bombay and then we'll go to Chip. Big up to you, Mick. I think it was a penalty, Mick. Um, when you dive in like that, totally on the wrong side, the ball is on the other side. He's left-footed player. You're tackling Lunch. with your right foot. Yeah. You try to come in like that. It was the worst time to do it. And I don't blame because he's not a left back. That's the only grace I can give Paran Basaka. But he should not do that. I would not be making that tackle. And he's not a young defender. If Kambala did that, then I would understand. But Aaron Basaka to do it there and then, <clears throat> no, I don't understand that. I don't. Because the ball is on the wrong side. But go ahead, Bumbaye. Hey, look at this. Uh, just before I go, look at this comment from Easy Money Marin Seven. You man are laughing, but gold is used to just spit on the gloves. At least Onana is careful. <laughs> <laughs> careful and clean. Why Onana, why Onana have in the glove? I'm worried about why he buried between the two posts. You know, it seemed like nobody can score mm. against us. So I think I look at the one Bissaka. <laughs> I thought he had a really good game today. I liked what he did yeah. today, uh, and I'm I'm quite a big fan of him. That challenge reminded me a bit of the uh, Phil Neville one in the FA Cup 99. It was a bit lazy. It was a bit um, it was a bit rash. So it's not something that I associate with Juan Bissaka, so I was surprised at it. But I think as Leso said, as Alid mentioned, you know, you give somebody a decision to make. When it happened, and I was watching it in real time, I thought, clean, 100% pure pen. But yeah, you slow it down. There's no contact. But the left leg, that is the trailing leg, uh, catches Harvey. So Harvey dives, but there is some after contact and they can be given. But that's not where the game is for me. The game is about the open play. That's what I'm interested in with mm. United these days. I'm not, you know, we're not, I'm not really asked, how did we play? So there's two facets to this game. There's the application, which today I have no problem with. Just the reality is we're not, we're not nowhere near as good a team as them. And we give opportunities, 20 shots a game standard. That's our welcome package. 28 to today. 28 today. Yeah, yeah. and half. Liverpool, bro, today, they can't finish their dinner. But for me, I think we're being 
there's a lot of harshness going on. I, I didn't think we had any passengers today, you know, I really didn't. No, uh, no, no, no. I'm not talking about in terms and of I, and I thought, Bombay, and I thought, I'm not I'm not talking about in terms of effort. Even Rashford was running today. That's everybody. why he probably went off. Even Rashford was running today. Yeah, but you, you I'm, had, you, you had a about, comment, you have a comment there before that he might be out for the rest of the season, something well long term. Yeah, yeah. Well well, well he, he played like he was out for the rest of the season. But I think bringing on <laughs> I think look it's it can not gonna be a big miss. It can go two ways, this, with Eric Ten Hag. You know, unfortunately now, when we're discontented, it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. And from my point of view, um, I didn't feel bringing Amrabat on on the 80th minute, it was a choice. You know what? We're obviously getting overrun. I don't want to open up. We've got the lead. We are, you know, at the moment, Liverpool... I'm not, not talking about I'm talking about Amrabat. I'm talking about Amrabat, Bumbaye. Don't misunderstand me. I'm saying to you, Amrabat was the clear thing for Casemiro, who was woeful. No, the what I'm trying to... Let Bruno me explain it to you. was fucking Bruno. No, Bruno, I Bruno... the point no, where no. I should have come on for Amma. Amma should have come on for Bruno. Not for me. His refusal it, to be taken. Well, look, I think your point is as valid as my point. Ultimately, Eric Ten Hag has two, this two options. He can keep going for the win... Give us some, uh, you know, give Liverpool oh, so something to think about with win, Bumbai. No, 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 Bumbai, please don't And having an outlet. Listen, but he chose... not... No, 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 Bumbai, you're misunderstanding my point. I want to make it clear so everybody understands the point I'm making. I'm saying to you, I understand the tactic to maybe go mid-block to low-block, right? When right. you're winning 2-1, one, it's naturally for footballers to protect the lead, right? Okay. It's natural. You drop a bit deeper. The other team right. is psychologically pushing. They're playing football. What I'm saying to you is that there was no threat on the fucking break. There was zero threat on the break. With Ahmad, you give us a bit more of a threat. So, Bruno, sit the fuck, come, come on the bench. Get your round of applause for that superb world-class goal. Well, let me tell and you this. this. Let me it. push but back on to that. Me, it's like, I don't give a fuck. Why can he never be taken off? That's the problem. Let, let I'm me... not having a football manager and a football oh, team where nobody I get what you're can saying. ever be stopped. Let me push back on that a little bit, bro. I think I said yesterday's show, um, I don't want to see Amrabat and the midfield some people chose with him in it. Because Amrabat is null and void past the halfway line. He's a very limited player. And I, I was never convinced of him anyway. And he's definitely not a Man United player for me. He brought him on to see the game out. That I understand you agree with. Um, and if he takes off Bruno, Bruno is the guy that's finding those channels. I thought he actually had a good game today. I know it's contrary to popular opinion. But Bruno, man, was popping up everywhere. Even in the 90th minutes, twice. Yeah. Twice he's back there cleaning shit up that could have been dangerous. So for me, Bruno today had a very good game. There was no, no bullshit half. with him. Yeah, oh. bro, I thought he was really good. So yeah. for me, he's took a decision, a penalty has been given away, and it's changed our conversation. That's all that's happened. Um, so I don't really have an issue with what Ten Hag did. Anthony got two opportunities. He waxed that first one, you know, high instead of low straight at Kelleher. Maybe different one. He had two two goals at it when he came on. So there was still a threat knowing that Liverpool have to commit. They have to go yeah. for it. Do you understand what I mean? So we could still exploit them. And we did have to, them chances in the up to, from the 90th to the 97th minute. Anthony, twice, he's in. I mean, not clear cut, but good enough to do better. So I thought Eric did all right. Penalty like that, bro, as we say, it is a difficult one to take. But you know what? On the balance of play, I can't be too critical today, man. The lads did give me um, a good performance. Um, and we walk mm. away with a hard-earned, hard-fought point. Um, and we do that because, yes, Liverpool didn't finish their dinner. But the game goes on. It's not our fault. You've got to keep playing. And we stayed in that game. We were always, we I did. felt, in that game. So it wasn't that bad, you know. We did. Okay. I mean, okay. The, the, okay. the positive bright thing um, when you, you see the... We look one ball almost getting the man of the match. Like, you know, the future looks bright. You look at the bench, you had a Harry Amas, yeah, you had Habibis. Fabulous. Yeah, yeah, listen, so like you, you, no, you can no, be Matt. excited. No, no, so no. You can be the same people can be excited, but I'm sorry. I'm not letting the point go. I'm sorry. Bruno, other I'm than sorry. the goal, other than one tackle, he was trash. Let's be real out here. Come on. Let's be real out here. Let's be real out here. Bruno Fernandez, other than the goal, which was world class, the way he hit it, the way that technically, the way that... Other than that the goal, goal and some safe. key defensive no, no, contributions. No, 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 no. One, one. 
What? The other one, there's two defenders on the back post and then he sticks his leg out to get it out for a corner. There, no Liverpool player is there. No Liverpool Yeah, I mean, I mean, he just there. he just stuck Sorry. his leg out now, right? Sorry. He he Sorry. just he just prevented Sorry. Liverpool from having a good chance. Other than that, yeah. I don't know what you see as a footballer, but he was trash. Yeah, he was trash, I, I agree with you. Other than, from the, those. other than the, 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 the goal, the world-class moment of the goal, in the first half, in that 41, when Liverpool are bumping us about, he's fucking wasting balls to nobody. Go ahead, Leso. And then go to Luani. And then Chips, go ahead. All right. Um, you know, um, I do agree with, 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 um, with the rest of the guys that Bruno did have um, a relatively um, okay game. You know, he, he did not have the worst game that he did have, you know, what we've been seeing the entire season. But my most important question will point to the, the Liverpool uh, fan that we have. Um, do you think that we should get rid of Tanakh? Because now the thing is, people think we're making this up where rival fans want us to keep Tanakh. Um, or, you know... Uh, most likely, you know, some fans believe that uh, we want we, sh we should get rid of Tanakh. But I know most rival fans want us to get rid of Tanakh because they can see from an objective stand of view. Um, they want us to keep not Tanakh, man. This manager. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what, that's why I want to ask the Tanakh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> that yeah, is no, why I, I wanted to ask the Liverpool fan specifically. <laughs> Yeah, so I want to I want to hear what he thinks, you know, because now the thing is, it's all good for us to say we want to keep this guy and everything. But if rival fans have a different set of view, then you have to start questioning what what you're actually seeing, and they know how good we used to be. You get what, what I'm what saying? They mean, know how, how why, much. Why, why how, are we how looking good to rival fans to tell us what to do? No, we're not. We're not no, asking no, 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 no. You, it's an you, opinion. It's a you know what? I, I, I just, I just want to hear a different view. I just want to hear a different yeah, view yeah, yeah. from a no, from no. a fan. Neutralizes, um, you know, nice. a football fan who supports a different plan, which is which yeah. is very um, I'd say, it's enlightening. So I want to hear from him, um, what he thinks, you know, and and from an objective stand of view, not from a trolling sense of you because no, i know no. when we troll we want one of us to stay so yeah yeah no i think from the outside obviously looking in um it definitely seems like you know of recent managers that you've had um you know it's it's not by coincidence that you know it's it's not worked so i think maybe just i mean you can look at it from both sides i don't think for one minute i'm excusing you know, Ten Hag, because I think his in-game management, I think even today, you know, when you're receiving that many shots, the fact to go defensive, um, inviting that much pressure when you're susceptible to conceding that many opportunities. Look, there's decisions in the game where, you know, that that's ultimately where, you know, the, those are the deficiencies with Ten Hag's game. Is he going to take you forward in that sense? But to the same token, you've, you've obviously... You've got this clean slate now with this, this Jim Ratcliffe situation. Whether or not it's sort of a, a pro progression where you sort of lay the foundations down um, over a longer period of time, so maybe you give Ten Hag. But then again, you, you, if you're just getting rid of Ten Hag, it's just pushing the, the, the can down the road, I think, because you've seen time and time again, it's it's not worked out. But you also got to look at it from a different perspective of, Clean slate, but how many times have we had a clean slate? So do you know? Do you know what I mean? If I'm looking at, I'll, I'll, like, I'll ask you this question. I'll ask you this question. Yeah. Do you think, be honest, as a Liverpool fan, do you think us getting rid of Eric Ten Hag would we be a threat to Liverpool next season, or if we keep, uh, if we? Why are you Eric trying to coach the guy? No, 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 no I'm not. I'm not. I'm asking so. the question because <laughs> know that Klopp I know for the next guy at Liverpool is going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult. It's gonna because the way that uh, your club was with the fans, if it's not Xavi Alonso, he's got an emotional thing with the fans, fans being patient. I know the next guy has to earn it, has to earn that trust and that belief from the fans because Jurgen Klopp is a special character, charismatic manager. So, genuinely, would Manchester United be more of a threat if they kept Eric Ten Hag or if they go and got a manager that knows how to fucking coach structurally better than Eric Ten Hag? Yeah, 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 hundred percent. They'd be they'd be more of a threat if they got a manager that you know knew knew 
uh, had more, more knowledge of what was what's going on. That's not me, you know, trolling. I just think when you're looking at it from an outside perspective, you know, sometimes you're looking at it and thinking he does make these decisions and it does reflect that he could be out of his depth. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So, uh, um, so I think it's there. Yeah. Manchester United have lost more football games than any other fucking time in our history in the Premier League. I'll go to Luani. Luani, go ahead and then we'll go to Chips. Um, so, go um, ahead. That idea, that idea that Bruno has a decent game, I completely disagree with that. I must be watching another game of football. Thank you know, you. the <laughs> idea that somebody or uh, is giving out hundred percent should be standard when you playing professional football for Manchester United at Old Trafford. That is the minimum. Give me some quality, please, because for that last this tackle that he made. I could count three other moments at the other end of the pitch where we could have made the game 3 1 and he couldn't make that final pass. We need to stop accepting those kind of things. If I start Bruno up against Odegaard, against um, uh, the, the midfielders of City, the 10 of uh, Chelsea, uh, Palmer, or even Aston Villa's 10. Or Newcastle stand, he doesn't stack up. I can't, I can't, I can't take that. It's been for years now. Okay, forget about. He used to put up the numbers, and we used to praise him. Now the numbers are not even there, and we 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 made to accept the, what he's doing. Us, no, he's not a number ten. If he's a work anything, uh, drop him in an eighth position, and then bring somebody else with quality. The reason why our strikers are not our strikers have to work so hard in order to create their own goal-scoring opportunity. It shouldn't be a staple that we should be accepting if we have a so-called number 10. It's not normal. We are a football team that play, we play in flashes. We don't even play in moment. We all know football is a game of momentum. And we play in flashes. And God forbid, when we're not playing at home, we don't even get those moment, those, those flashes. And every time we play, it's more of our strikers having to work hard with their men. How can just we have like a through ball? Just a through ball, walk the ball in the middle, put a nice through ball, and let's get a tap in. How about that? Why is it that it's always have to be hoof ball? He get the game in, he get the ball in so much critical position, and 80% of the time he make the wrong decision. And at the end of the game, I'm here here. I mean. Oh, Bruno worked hard. He did this tackle. Nah, bunk that, man. I'm done with this guy, you know? <laughs> Listen, pick up to you. Pick up to you. Listen, at the end of the day, let me just get to some of these super chats. Uh, yeah, I got that one already. Got this one already. Freestyle football tactics, freestyle defending, 100%. To me, I think today the defence could get La Pranwa. I thought Kimbala and Maguire. And you know what I mean? I'm, I try the objectives if I can. I only, I call it as I see it. Maguire was really good today in terms of the aggression, the physicality. Yes? It, it must be difficult when there's massive gaps. And at times you've got four against, you've got four against two or four against three or five against three. At the back, it must be really difficult. <laughs> and of course, Liverpool were not eating their dinner, weren't finishing. But it is, can I might play as a... As, I, I don't know what I, I don't know these abbreviations mean because I'm, I'm dyslexic, so I don't know. Can Ahmad play as a as a, what, as a midfield player? Yeah, attacking midfield he or a supporting striker. Can. Yeah, of course he can. Yeah, one hundred percent he can. He's shown that. He's shown he's, no. that's why it's very technical. He showed that in one of the most competitive leagues in world football. He can play either wide. He can Nuridin, play. Can, can I just say that, that it's, 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 it's always the person chat. missing? Let me, super oh. chat. Let me just get this super chat. Bruno was horrible um, and got a goal. And a slide tackle that he was so bad. A football game's 90 minutes, not few moments. This has been Bruno's story the whole time he's been at United. We need to stop uh, being moment 100%. Let me just say Owanski. Owanski here. Let me get Owanski. Owanski says, let, let, uh, late to join the stream. I thought Eric and I set up the team very well today, unfortunately. He can't account for Bruno Casemiro giving the ball away every chance. Those two are, are too careless. Right, big up to you, Owanski. I appreciate the super chat. Um, this one is good. And well, so I feel like Eric had to require very high technical players. 100% agreed. Yeah. The reason why he works so well in the area defense is because I 100% have always we've been saying this. I have had a better players in every other position in the teams. That won't happen in this in Prem. I don't see it working. And that's why I don't see any future for it. 
people what don't understand is that Eric Ten Hag has got the Bielsa leads of man for man, but his version. Bielsa leads the position that of Carl of uh, what's, it, what's the name Phillips. Phillips, yeah, was so because Phillips had to be that player that had to have the lungs of like three fucking marathon runners. <laughs> Let me repeat that to you. Phillips, right? Phillips, who's at West Ham now, chubby, fat, fat little boy now, the fat boy at West Ham, who was sat on the, on the bench for a year. But shouldn't and we try and get to hug the players listen he needs? Me. Listen, no, no, because you know why? And if those players are not, unless you have a squad, of 19 players that all can play his football, there is no point. We, Manchester United, do not have that. We don't have the money to go and buy these players. We don't have the money to sell all of these players. And we can't get all these. We need a coach that can give a structure to a fucking football team so that we're not playing kamikaze fucking suicide <laughs> FC football and basketball convocation well, well, of football. Then, let me we're not doing quick. that. Let me just go to Chips. Let me go to Chips because he's been waiting. This basically. is a very Chips. good uh, point. Actually. Yeah, yeah, 100%. We've been saying that, bro. We've been saying that he, every time in a press conference, he comes out and says, well, I need the players to come back. That's why he always wants to play those players. That's why he shot out the rest of the squad last season. He only played with 13 or 14 players last season because he knew he can get a bit out of them. But football in the Prem does not fucking work like that. Football in the Prem is the most testing league in world football. If you win, every team can beat every team at the end of the day or get a draw. So it's physically the most demanding league in world football and hence why the players are dropping right, left and centre because he's asking them to play uh, Bielsa football. And what do we say about Bielsa? Bielsa looks good, but he drilled. Bielsa had more time and Bielsa, when he first came into Leeds, he drilled the players. He didn't go chasing fucking four trophies playing counter-attacking football. Bielsa, what you get with him is that it's this way or no way. And at the end, at Leeds, the players found that, but at the end they were conceding goals. I just want to quickly go to Chips. I'll come back to you a bit. Chips, seeing as, as, as an Arsenal from, from the outside, what do you think of the way we play? This suicide football. Yeah, I mean, I've got a small sample size. I've only really watched Man U play properly. Three games, and obviously one was the Arsenal game at Emirates earlier in the season, where they seemed to be, to me, seemed more counter-attacking. And I could understand it, sort of some parts, the nature of the way. Uh, one of our best games played. of the season, by the way, I think. Yeah. That was one of our yeah. best performances of the season. It was, it was a very counter-attacking. Counter but it wasn't just counter-attacking. We were pressing you hard, to be fair. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I, be, I think there was a lot of energy, but that's what it seemed to me. Obviously, one of your goals that was given offside was from a counter-attack move, that Ganacho goal I'm, I'm talking about, right? And Which obviously, goal, most reached... We know that, don't we? That was a goal. That they drew the, long, the line at <laughs> the wrong place. We know that, don't we? Be honest, you want to go. I'm not gonna go there. I'm not gonna go there. And they obviously the most recent two games I can only go by, and that's the Chelsea one. I was watching it, and this one, and both of them, uh, the two sides of the same coin, very unstructured, full paced. It, it to me it seemed like whatever the manager has said to them, they've gone on the pitch and they've decided, you know what. We're just going to do our own thing. So you've got Dalot yeah. running at full pace, doing what he thinks he can do individually as a player. Uh, Rashford, like you said, he did put an, more of an effort in. I just think just purely because it's at Trafford. You're playing Liverpool. It's a big sort of derby match. You had to do that kind of effort. But beyond that, to me, the most concerning thing is, and I said this to my Man U fans, after two years, I can't see anything unique about... Ten Hag and Man United. What, for me, I can only compare it to uh, Arteta. I knew, okay, this is Arteta's style. He's from the back. He wants ball players. He wants to make sure none of the players lose the ball. Whoever cannot take care of the ball, who cannot treat this ball like a baby, like their own child, they're not going to be on the team. So one by one, all of these players that could not take care of the ball started flying at the door, started flying off to the bench, to loans wherever they can and he started getting players that could take care of the ball and you That's could it. immediately see a style slowly and slowly being born with ten hag two years mind you ten hag has brought some players in he's brought in anthony he's brought in hoyland he's brought in uh lisandro he decided to keep some of these players like that lot and um he brought in onana as well and to me i still cannot see 
a a distinct style from Ten Hag. I honestly don't know. To me, Steam seems like he's picking the easiest option of let's play counter-attacking football, let's rely on individual magic, individual skill set, some of the players that can give me magical moments. That's what it feels like to me. Uh, and I can't see beyond that. I genuinely can't see which I find the most worrying about Ten Hag. Yo, big up, bro. I appreciate it. Go ahead, mate. You were saying about that comment about that super chat. Go ahead. I'll yeah, but on the way, on the way, big yeah, up. I, I really like this one by the technical. I mean, we don't really have technical players that can sort of look after the ball in the midfield. Every single midfield you look at, Erdegaard, like, you know, Erdegaard is a totally different player, number 10, you know what I mean? Bruno's, Bruno's role is never to be to take care of ball. Bruno is a chance creator, always been, right? A stat pattern. So instantly we don't have that midfield. We don't have that combusting engine. We don't have technical players to play Ten Hag uh, football. That's absolutely correct. You know, we, the gentleman just the spoke about foot, footy chip mentioned something really, really interesting because the, the style of play changed. I mean, he... Obviously, you finish third, you finish, you want to, you know, um, uh, what do you... Oh, shit. I tried just, to... Just to jump in here real quick, because Ten Hag, Ten Hag had a comment for people like this Arsenal fan and all of you that are confused, right? He said, I don't know and I don't care. That's their assessment. We know what our identity is. We want to dominate in and out of possession and play out from the back. Simple. That's, that's what Ten Hag wants to do. He doesn't have the players to do it yet. I think we should back the manager and give him the players that he wants to do it. No, let him no, ship out some of no, these guys. No, Casemiro, uh, Bruno, no. Surely with the players you uh, have, you should be able to Let me just say this. Uh, Mick, big up Mick. If Mick, uh, here we go. Mick's back. Sorry, Mick. Finish your I point. Am. Sorry, I cut you off by accident. I was trying to get rid of the photo because there was too many things. On I, I lost go my ahead. train of thought, but the, 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 the no, no. Point so you were saying that you were you, you were talking about. You were talking about the technical players. We we're talking about the uh, Adewale. We don't comment. have. The, we we don't have the technical players. I mean. Injuries is not excuse. Every manager can sort of work around it, like you know. But if you look at the technical abilities of the players, right? And if you look at what what you gentlemen said here, are you an Arsenal supporter, right? Yeah, yeah. Put chips, yes. Arsenal, yeah, so and, it's and, a basic. And, 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 and is a is a Liverpool fan. Yeah, yeah. It's a big up, big up for you. So you, you look at Arteta, what he did. You you mentioned something very valid there, like you know, as a as a reasoning, right? Two seasons in a row, like it took him. Two three seasons to get rid of the deadwood, what you call them, like you know, Shaka, the Bamiangs, and the deadwoods, and then brought in the players to shape to play that technical style of football, right? Tenang has been here 18 months, right? Okay, first season overachieved, played with what you got, but it was just a, uh, I would say that he did something magical in that first season that he got a tune mm. out of those players, you know what I mean? That no, everyone expected was dead. This season around was never like you know. You can say injuries, yes, true, true. But I think he just reverted to play safe because these players that he currently has avail available cannot play the, the level of football. So you're just going to play haram football or survival football or <laughs> counter attacking football. You know what I mean? I mean, it is because these players are schooled. I look back into Jose Mourinho. Rashford can only play transitional based attacking football. Mm. These players only know one style. And all of a sudden you come in and say, I want you to press like high up on the pitch. I want to have high intensity, high possession. And they go like, huh? Right? Rashford doesn't even buy into it. You can see the body language of Rashford. He does not like to play in this system, right? Rashford, by the way, according to my opinion as well, only plays well when Luke Shaw is on the pitch because they're used to each other. They're overlapping. Other than that, he's lost. And we are definitely being lost. And the way that we are sitting currently in this position is a fucking miracle. Like, you know, we had... I don't know, most injuries out of all the players, the key players, Lissandra Martinez, you know, the way we started to play from the back last season was pretty much the Bermuda Triangle of Manchester. That was like starting from Licha, starting to, to uh, Varane and, and Casemiro. Now, Casemiro has lost his leg. Everyone can see that. Licha has not even been, been there. We haven't even had an opportunity to play with our first 11 yet. Think about it. We haven't, right? We're still in pre-season limping on but, one leg. But so has no... But no, um, majority of teams in the Premier League haven't either, because it's mm. all because of the World Cup last season. Every th every three days there was a game, and these things are the things that. Are... Listen, I'll let, I'll let you go, obviously, but you're still in there. I just go to you quickly. Uh, to me, a point at Old Trafford any time of the season, regardless how shit we are, it's still a point. Uh, we said that about yesterday. You're not out of it. How hopeful are you with Liverpool being successful towards the end of the season for this? Uh... 
Yeah, I'm still I'm still hopeful. I think the the race is still on. I think there's still points to be dropped across all um, across across, but all teams involved, uh, Arsenal and City as well. So um, yeah, I just think obviously it's a bit of a kick in the teeth considering when you see the control to uh, Arsenal at this point in the season. Um, obviously, you know you you want it to be in your control, but I think the statement and how big of a win it would have been to get a win. Um, at Old Trafford, regardless of the form that you guys are in, I just think you you see how big a, a big of an occasion it was today. If you, if you win that game, uh, how big of a boost that would have been to to take away. Uh, still hopeful, still um, optimistic. Of course, a uh, lot lot left to go yet. But I think uh, when it gets to like three four games to, left to go, I think that's when the pressure will ramp up. Ben, so yeah. who's your next game in the Premier League? You got Atlanta midweek. I know that. Is it going to Palace. change the team? Palace are home. Palace are home oh. next Sunday. I think, real, realistically, I think the games that we could drop points, I think Villa away, Everton away, and um, Tottenham at home. Big, a few big games there. So Don't worry, all right. We're, we're beating Arsenal at home, so that, that, that's a free hit for you. At least three <laughs> yeah. points. Yeah, we got Arsenal at home, yeah. Yeah, listen, yeah. big up to you, Ella. Listen, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. You were here on the preview last night. Thanks for coming wow. on. I appreciate you. Big up. Listen, give the give the channel a shout out. So you are this is your channel, yeah? I'll have yeah, Clock, uh, Clock Talk TV. Yeah, no pleasure to be on. I know uh, in the Lions Den a bit here with all uh, the, all you. Yeah, minds. yeah. Listen, uh, nah. it's all good, man. I appreciate the hospitality, guys, and um, yeah, wish you all the best the rest of the season. You um, too. So what's the channel man. that you're on now as well? You and Nurabis. What's that channel called? Remind yeah, me. so I'm I'm on uh, LIFC with Fozzy, uh, Liverpool. Uh, LIFC, yeah, yeah, big up. Yeah, Fozzie. but cool. if you want to see individual content, I'm on Clock Talk TV as well. So um, yeah, I appreciate that. But yeah, appreciate. You're gonna uh, definitely have to yeah, change man. the name when Klopp leaves. I know. <laughs> it's a work in progress, <laughs> boys. <laughs> work in progress. Yeah, Big up to you, man. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for it coming might, on. It might be Southgate TV, right? I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not a chance, mate. I'll oh, quit YouTube, oh. mate. I'm not changing it to Southgate. Oh, oh that, that would make me the happiest man, honestly, if, they got, if you got a Southgate. Man. But then on Seriously, the other hand, on the other hand, honestly, but if he's if he's Ten Hag or, or Southgate, get Ten Hag, I'll keep Ten Hag for a season. 100%. <laughs> yeah, I do not yeah. want Southgate. That's how my bad bro- it is. My brothers, my brothers, do you... Do you know why I don't accept the excuse for Ten Hag. Two years ago, when he took over, when we were doing that preseason tour, imagine what that team was like. We beat Liverpool well, in that preseason tour. Look at that front three that we have. We have Martial, Sancho, and Rashford. That midfield, that team that he took over have Baye, he, have, he still have Ghana in the middle. The team as he's assemb- it's assembled today is at the image of Ten Hag. And it's not like he did not have money to spend. He trimmed that team. He guarded the team. He had $400 million to spend. It's 350 And this is what we got. Okay? It's 350 350 Okay? He got 350 to spend, and the team look like this today, playing this kind of football. And we are saying... He need more technical player. What what are we talking about? Where is the accountability? Yeah, big up Claire. Listen, I think both of them need to go. Hundred percent, I agree with you. If you just keep the players and sack uh, Ten Hag, nothing ain't gonna change. We're gonna find ourselves in the same cycle. For me, at this way, I'm radical. I would spend majority of the majority of the money for the for the transfer window on buying people's contracts out to get the fuck out of this football club. But yeah, let me just go 100%. to Adewale's comment. Let me just go to Adewale's comment. I don't know if I read it out. Uh, Adewale says, Adewale says, I feel like Eric Tantan, it requires... High... No, no, not that one. It's another one. Sorry, yeah, let me just get it. It's another one. There we go. This one. I don't know if I read it out. I don't know what I'm doing now. Uh, I've opened another tap. Let me just get rid of this. Um, he has spent uh, 400 million. <laughs> if you haven't seen it yet, it, you won't see it until he spends... One billion. No thanks. Get me the Serbia. Give him three, four hundred mil. Which I, that's the, the only thing that I I, I I disagree with is that I think it's about three fifty. Let's get that. The, the biggest thing I disagree with that if you get the Serbia, we're going to challenge for the league. No, the Serbia needs at least yeah. a season to coach the players to literally the way he wants to play. The second season, we should see an improvement and player improvement, especially the younger players. That's why I'm scared Ten Hag to leave Ten Hag with this um, high. Uh, kind of like crazy football of this uh, man-for-man football 
with young players when they're developing because you can burn them out, you can dent them, and, and they can get lots of injuries. And that's why I look at someone like Hoyland, Jarvis. Hoyland looks like he's the type of player that he's been out for a month. He's going to need three or four games to get back into the rhythm. He looks hmm. way short of the rhythm. What did you think of seeing him? And who was your man of the match as well while we're there? Yeah, so so many subjects been talking about. I, I just want to address this technical player thing. You know, we have Casemiro who won, I don't know, four Champions League with, with Real Madrid. Is he is he not technical? We have Bruno who has been uh, great for Portugal in the World Cup, uh, the Euros. He's been playing for Man United, Premier League high level for so many years, and we have Maynu. Those three guys are they not technical? Compared to, for example, Liverpool, so was like McAllister and and so. I don't think Bruno is technical. I don't think know about Bruno. Is, for for me, we have to we have to compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. We can't compare oranges to apples. We can't compare Man United and and midfield to to Arsenal or to Manchester City. It's no, a no, whole different no, no, thing. No, it's about yeah, it's yeah, about yeah. possession football. As I said in the beginning, we play. Now I would I, I assess Ten Hag's tactics to be ultra direct, extreme in transition, high tempo, and chaos over control. And 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 the thing is, when you see, for example, Casemiro receive the ball, everybody in the midfield, everybody else, they run they can, yeah, fast yeah. as they can. Yeah. So the distance between the, the the ball carrier and the next Man United player is huge. Yeah. So so the, so the percentage of of getting the pass wrong is very high because of that. And we're trying to 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 play ultra direct and and ultra extreme in in transition. And this is well, why our players this look. Is, yeah, but Javas, this is where he's got. To me, this is not his football. This is not Eric Ten Hag football because the Eric Ten Hag football I saw Ajax in the Champions League. I didn't watch the Eric Division all the time. Was the fact that they kept the ball when they wanted to be patient. They had the triangles, so the gap between the player and the ball and the mm -hmm. rest of the that was not like that. There was always a triangle. There was always a dark triangle in wherever. So it would be like Luke nah, Shaw. No, no, Maybe why he played at Ajax was not his football. Maybe this is his football. I've seen Ajax play in the 1990s. They play the same way that they play today with just technical No, but players. they've got better and technical footballers. The point I wanted to make was that they've, they've been coached to be technically good on the ball, to take care of the ball. And to take care of the ball. No, of course. He, there are similar similar samples where he would do the overloads, right? I think majority of managers do the overloads in the box, yeah? Mm -hmm. Especially for the bigger teams, yeah? They do that. But he did it in a slightly different way to what it is. So, yeah, you're always going to be susceptible to the counter-attack. But it's about what you put in position to win the ball back for you and how much you squeeze. But at Manchester United, mm -hmm. the gaps are too big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too big. And to but me, you heard like I said, no, no, my point is when I'm trying to explain this is is uh, we are we are pointing out the midfielders because we mm. we see with our eyes Casemiro lose the ball, Casemiro shit. That that's our 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 thought process, but that's that's wrong. And you and you and you mentioned the right thing, uh, Nordin. It's the squeeze. We need, but because but, you can't compare us to Arsenal and Manchester City, we are much more like Liverpool in a way. We are, we are much more like Aston Villa and uh, actually Chelsea at the moment, trying to to play with a high line, high press, and and and, uh, and play in transition all the time with with the ultra fast the runners try to to win the ball. And the thing is, uh, we we lack a key a key player, and uh, and that's uh, Martinez. The register. He, he always fill the gap. He squeezes yeah. up, and and yeah, uh, but it's I'm telling you. Even with him, it can look like crazy still because yes. of the man-to-man -man thing. And, and I genuinely don't think our players are physical enough to be able to cope with the one-to-one battles when we come against the better teams. I think yeah. the better teams are more physical than us. They're more fitter than us. They're more like, they have this more like, they have more uh, resilience than, than we do. But I just want to go Javis. to, um, Javis. I just want to, uh, what there was somebody saying something about, Sorry, I think I've lost. Uh, but go ahead, Luani. Go ahead, Luani. Come J back at that point. I know. Man of the match for you, Jarvis. Who's man of the match for you? Um, 
Well, I said on the MEFC Realist uh, TV stream that uh, I, I rated Bruno today. Today, his performance was really good, I believe. He, he worked extremely well. And, and, and Luani mentioned he played as a number 10. No, Bruno is no number 10. He's a number 8. He's been playing as a number 8 all season long. He's nowhere yeah, near sure. a number 10. He's much deeper on the pitch. And, and, and you see it when he works back, how he runs. But he's undisciplined. And that this is Bruno's biggest problem. Today, he was more disciplined. And, and um, I, I think he had a good game today, especially defensively. Okay. okay. Javis, you mentioned, um, you mentioned a couple of weeks ago, you say that it's almost like Ten Hag is trying to reinvent the wheel. I agree mm -hmm. with you. When you look at the way he played, today he was trying to invert uh, Dalu all the time and he was not working. We couldn't play out from the back. If you're trying to reinvent the wheel, that doesn't need to be reinvented and it's clearly not working. Don't be a dickhead. Just change it. Yeah. Well, we can't, we can't, but we, as I say, we can't compare apples to oranges and we, we, we can't criticize Ten Hag for doing a thing he tries to, to do. You know, it's, it's his tactics. He wants to play ultra direct and, and, uh, and on transition now. And this is, this is the style we are going for. That's, that's, that's Ten Hag. And at least for me, I can clearly see a style of play at the moment. And, and, and we are gradually getting better at it. Uh, our defending now is the problem and, and seeing out the games because it's too intense for us. We can't keep up uh, the intensity for the full 100 minutes because most games today is 100 minutes. And, and we see we saw it against Chelsea, we saw it against Brentford, we saw it against Liverpool today. We, uh, we, fizz, we fizzes out at the end of the game because we don't have the, the strength. And, and maybe maybe it's it's because of a uh, lack of squad depth, but I believe Ten Hag trusts a, a small group of players. He needs to, to widen his uh, horizon and, and yeah. trust in the Premier League. And that's why for player. me, every way I look at it, Eric Ten Hag has got to go. If this Manchester United want to go forward... Yeah. I just want to go to Mick because Mick was Holly's fan. Then I come back to you, Lesso. Go ahead, Mick. Yeah. No, no I'm you gonna ask you this. I, I don't know. I've not been on stream with you. Does, the, in your turn, does Eric Tanaga get another season from this, what he's shown this season? There is no. If I look around, uh, knowing there's um, this this season. I mean, this summer, it's unprecedented. Like you know, so many teams looking for a new manager like we're talking about Liverpool's looking for one with Barcelona's looking for one Bayern's looking for one there's a shortage um what is available right is it just because do we need to swap the manager because I don't know he's got one year left on his contract I'd rather see what you said earlier right? if you if you think about it certain place needs to go before the manager that's been there for far too long you know, you need to sort of, Ten Hag has been at least introducing the youth, right? Playing the youth, right? He's brought up Kobe Maino, he brought up Ganacho, brought up Willy Kumbala, Forsen on the bench. You see what he's trying to do. I think that if he stays for another season, if you get rid of a certain players that don't belong and you start investing in the youth, then you might see a different difference. So, it's a double-edged sword, Nerdin. Like, you know, I, I want him to succeed. At the same time, there is no nothing better out there. Like, you know, you, you tell me what's better out there, you know? Okay. Uh, I'll come I'll come to you, Lester, just two seconds. I'll say this. I, I see Manchester United, on the, and he's been here for nearly two, two years. But he's going to be here, the man, until the end of the season. To me, what what I would accept if this season was last season. I'm not accepting this. I'm never accepting this performance, this level of the... This shambolic basketballification of football, getting out of the Champions League, <laughs> doing all of the things that he's done this season, not learning from mistake after mistake after mistake. I don't see it. He always says, Oh, I need my players back. I need my players back. Like the players mm. are not going to get injured. You overplayed them last season. And I was calling it out from fucking January onwards. Yeah, and I predicted that United would have uh, injuries because I saw it with Liverpool the season before when they went for four trophies. So for me, if I can see it, he's getting paid five million a fucking year. If he can't see it, I'm sorry. There is nothing that I see from Eric Ten Hag when I've been to games Old Trafford. He said Everton against Bournemouth. Uh, is, it, is it Bournemouth against what other teams that were bumping us off the park at Old Trafford? I can't for me because I've left the stadium early because I've gone. What's the point of me sitting here? Right. When I've got Ghana, the guy that he let go, controlling the tempo in the game against us. So for me, mm. 
but the biggest thing is that from the what separates me from the rest of the people who want Eric and Hard gone is that I believe six of the starting lineup need to fuck off with him as well. Yeah, that's why. And I'm then the coach, and, and 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 the medical department need to fuck off, and then True. all of the coaches that death. were there, yeah, yeah, all the coaches that were there from um from Jose Mourinho, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, all those need to go as well. Yeah, it needs a but, whole uh, new revamp. That's what it needs. Go ahead, let's go. Man of the match for you, mate. So uh, Java said, um, you know, I go with the, you know, because everyone is saying, well, you know, Kobe Maynard, what a goal, hundred percent, the yeah. serenity in the storm. But I go with um, Willy Pombala, like you know, what a performance. You know, first ninety-five minutes in on under floodlights against Liverpool, the biggest rivalry. Willy Kwambala, you, you got to give him the Royces today, 100%, right? I agree with you guys. Hmm. Big up. Windy, last season was not the same. Last season, Manchester United played more controlled, and yeah, you played true, to yeah. Bruno and Rashford, mm -hmm. who played a lot better. Go ahead, Lesso. Lesso, are you there? Okay, we'll come back to you. But yeah, last season, so, Manchester um... United actually dominated the majority of the games at home. But the fact that he was not resting, uh, he was playing the first team against fucking farmers from Moldova, farmers from fucking... Uh, uh, Cyprus um, against Charlton in mm. who are League One or League Two at home, Reading in the FA Cup, where he wasn't making changes, and I was calling it out there and then in real time. So, <laughs> it, it, to me, there is there, I don't see when I look at it logically, and I don't get mm. too emotional when I look at the pros and cons of Eric Tanak for another season. I don't see it. I genuinely mm. don't see it because the idea that he thinks these players can play that level of football. In terms of like the one uh, the man for man against the bigger teams, when we haven't got the physicality, when majority of the players can't play that football, tells me where he's at. And if he would have done it last season, I would have been like, yeah, hundred percent. You but know the what? Difference is between I'm, last I'm happy season. to be patient. The difference is last season and this season is total. Is a different nuance. Like Ericsson was brought in on a free. Ericsson in that midfield pivot. Do you remember Casemiro, Ericsson, Bruno? That worked, right? And, and back then, Ericsson had this. He was the registrar, like you know, he was he, he was the serenity in the storm back then. Mm. But now we lost both legs. We don't have technical players, like you know, to actually hold on to the ball. And the fact that the uh, uh, an eighteen year old Kobe Maynard was injured in the preseason, came back in December, and now we're starting to sort of have somebody. You can't rely on an eighteen year old. You can't. No, you know that you can't. Not. So, and you know what? Um... And what hurts me? Go ahead. I'll come to Leliani. Is that I think with this Kamakasi football. The, the players are going to be more injury prone to get muscles, and you're going to because they cannot do it. They've not been Thank slowly you. drip fed to play like that to build up the yeah. the physicality and the fitness. And he's damaging Thanks. them. Me personally, he's damaging them. Go ahead, Lauren. So, um, Javis, I agree with you that what you say about Ten Hag that is his tactic. I don't knock him for that, okay? But as part of uh, being a manager, your job description also as a leader of men is to. Mm is to solve problem, not create them. When you have a, a situation where your tactic is draining your team, is wearing down them, you have to try to find a solution to that. You know, find the best outcome possible. We're not, we're not speaking enough about the perspective of these players. They go home and they will watch the game. Imagine them watching back the game. They're not saying I was shit. They're saying we, we were shit. If they're looking at the game, they're saying, though, we were bad. I mean, what do you, do you think they feel enthusiastic to come back to wake up Monday morning, come back to, to, to the training session? Is more and more the message you're giving them as a coach, they'll be they they'll be less inclined to believe in that. It's almost I'm I'm personally just tired of coming, uh, waking up every day and watching the games and feeling like yo, we owe our survival to the fact that mm -hmm. the other team was not clinical enough. And the best analogy I can give to that is almost like you are you are a squadron leader, you leading men to war, and you come back after you say, you know what, guys, don't worry, we we survive because they're not good shooters. No, it doesn't work like that. Everybody look will look at you like you're crazy, you're putting our life at risk. And these players, when they go on the pitch every time they are putting their career on the line, they are putting you know, they have the potential of injury. So as a manager, you have to come up with the best plan possible that and play to their to the best of their ability play to your team's strength 
and that's all I'm, I'm asking him to do. But he he doesn't. He feel like he's all set in his manner. He's in a cocoon right now, and he can't change. That's why he have to go. If you look at the <laughs> Liverpool team, right? There, I'll be honest with you. The difference in quality between them and us today was not really that much. Liverpool is a team that play above their quality. We are a team that play below our quality. Mm -hmm. That's mm. why we were, you see the goals we scored today, that goal of Kobe Minor today. I'm oh. telling you, Liverpool have more chance than that, more clear-cut chance than that. They couldn't put the, back, the ball in the back of the net. And we have one opening, and that was the goal. We, we, we need to do better. Yeah, but you 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 see that uh, that the young players adapt to to Eric Ten Hag, and and you know Eric Ten Hag, he's extreme in a way, in in the way he thinks football, and and uh, we got to be clear that that this is Man United we're talking about. It's not a daycare. So if you're a pro professional football player, and you have to go in and do your job hundred percent every day, you can't. Rashford can't complain. I don't like the style of Eric Ten Hag. No, 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 then no, no. fuck I off. Agree. Because I agree. It, it, you uh, have yeah. to be loyal to the manager. If uh, you're not loyal, uh, you are not you a Man United it. player. You shouldn't be around because no, it's no, not you take care. In, in uh, real life, in life, you're loyal to a plan that works. That's no. how it works. You're loyal to a plan in that works. If you go in there every day and you guys are getting battered, it's not like these players are not running. No, no it's they not how running. it works. It's not how it works because the You're hierarchy, the the hierarchy of the club is the manager is in charge. And if the manager gives you an order how to play, you do as the manager say. And if you don't, you're not you're not loyal to, to the club and, and how we set up the club. You know, we, 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 we have to stop chasing players and feeling sorry for them no you know, no no no. eric no, ten hog no. is the man in charge he if he wants to play extreme ultra direct the uh, extreme transition high tempo chaos over control whatever you call it so be no, it. they have these to do the, the best of their are, ability no i, I, I agree are independent contractor and the manager is not their dad i'm telling you they go home they have an army of lawyers they have a whole bunch of friends yeah, behind them you right see them them and tell them you know what this is not working. They don't so, care. They get paid either way, you know. So I so, can address you. Uh, uh, can I can I address you there? Like you know, you absolutely speak in fact. because football nowadays don't see that as a enjoyment. They see this as work, right? They have large. They they have like you know agents that are too powerful. They have uh, taking care of everything three sixty. Um, they don't care. Like they they go to work. They go to training. They get paid three hundred k no matter what, right? Win, lose, draw. They don't give a fuck. You know, there's no loyalty in football nowadays. Absolutely. And these players, they are assets to the club. They're worth more than a manager. So what's going to go before the players is always the manager that goes. And they can throw the manager under the bus any time. So if they come in and put a stinker, you know, they can, they can be like, you know, shackles. They can come in in training, do well in training, get picked. As soon as they get on the pitch, you know, they all intelligence goes out the window. Like, you know, a manager can give instructions, but at the end of the day, like, you know, it's... It's your mental ability, what you do on the pitch, right? Yeah. You, you yeah, got Mick, a point there, like, you know. Hmm? Yeah, no, no, 100%, Mick. Listen, and I, I, this is where I agree with both of you, and I agree with Jarvis as well. Jarvis, if we had the football club that was a, with the owner, the structure was coming down, the mm. ownership, the board, and they were holding these players to account, we've not had that. We've had a club yeah. where everybody gets paid, where everybody can do whatever they want, where players can eat mm. what they want. Remember, I was telling you about seeing... Uh, Aaron Basaka outside the chicken shop. You know what I mean? Chicken, but I, never, I never saw any of the Liverpool players. Sorry, any yeah. of the Man City players. Uh, Liverpool players come to Manchester as well, by the way, because it's only like 45 minutes on the train. So they come and I would see a reek, but I've never saw them eating burgers and stuff mm. like that or getting a kebab at the end of the night after they've been out in a nightclub. So that's the difference. Like, we, we've not had that. So we've not had that installment since Fergie left. Fergie mm. was that guy. And he demanded total loyalty. Every player you listen to an interview, they go, I was so scared about not letting yeah. him down, not letting my family down, letting him down. Mm. That was mm. the, I couldn't look at him. If, if, I, if, if, I, if I'm not done what he's been doing, if he thinks I've not been doing what I've doing, I couldn't look at him. And that creates, and that culture left with Fergie. We had Woodward yeah. and the bankers. You know, that's what we had. But guys, we've got to wrap it up there, man. We could talk about this all day, day and night. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pass a couple of more fasts and this Eid. Oh, yeah, and hopefully yeah. we'll be back to full energy. But I want to say big up to Mick. Big up to everybody. My man of the match. My man of the match was Kimbala. Big up to Kobe Menu. What are the goals? Kimbala the, the, the all day. The technique all day. to literally receive the ball dead on his back foot. Like, talk about back foot player. When we talk about the level of technical ability of a player, is that can you take it on the front foot? Can he take it on the back foot? 
and at that angle, the way you took it on the back foot, those things is hard to coach. Hard to coach, really difficult to coach. So that ball, he didn't even look, to be fair. He knew where it was going because he he, he trains with these, whipping them into those corners. Fantastic goal. And I'm gutted for him. The team could not do, and Eric Tanaka could not do a proper in-game management to make sure that goal was the winner because that would have been played years and years and years to come. But unfortunately, mm. the team are too shit and robbed him himself of that of that incredible so goal. Big up two, to everybody. Please two, two amazing let me know goals. in the comments who was your man of the match. Let me know if you think Bruno had a good game. I thought Maguire was one of his best games in a Manchester United shirt today. Yes. No word of a yes, lie. I thought Maguire and indeed. Kambala, amazing who's man of the match. I thought Diego Dalot was being fantastic. Yes, he was and I'm fantastic. glad that he didn't have any hangovers against them. Um, against Chelsea and what happened in that game. I'm glad that he cleared his head and looks like a very dedicated footballer for now. But we, we know about Diego a lot. Hopefully he proves me wrong because his form can be that amazing and then he just dips for mm. a couple of months. Go ahead, uh, Mick. Last word. I forgot. What, what, why? Where was Scott McTominay? He was not even on the bench. Yeah, he's injured. He he, he overhyped. He hyperflexed, remember, against Chelsea. Remember, mm. he hyperflexed his knee. Oh, yeah. He okay. hyperflexed his knee, but he carried yeah. on, to be fair to him, to try to play in the game. But yeah, that's why he was yeah. injured. Yeah, but big up. Listen, make sure you check out Mick Man UFC Realist TV. Make sure tomorrow night at nine o'clock, Jarvis Corner, Bowley seventy seven on Twitter. Um, Muani, Luani, you check check him out on Twitter. Um, that's the same. I, I, I'm How do you say your first name, brother? Moraini. 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 Yeah. Moraini. Yeah. Luani. Yeah, check him out, and then you also check out Lesso. Um, Let's all talk, uh, let's all talk football, for us, let's all football TV. Sh uh, Sean Thomas uh, on Twitter and uh, po political podcast he does is how we see things. Make sure you check out Bombay, never check him out anywhere. Make sure you check out the, the Liverpool kid, Elad Club TV. Yeah, it was, it was, and then who okay. else was on here? I'm just trying to remember. Um, 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 yeah, the the but, Arsenal guy. Yeah, Chips, what's it called? Fish and Chips. 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 Yeah. Make sure you check, check that channel out as well, that brother. Big up to you for coming on. And uh, love and light to you all. But in the comments, please let me know your man of the match, the how Bruno performed. Uh, I'd love to know about it. Can uh, I have seen game management? I want to know what you guys think and uh, what you thought about Kobe's goal. Big up, love and light to you. Take care. Big up, like. please and please, guys. We're shadow banned. We are demonetized. Just like. Just, like, just like my new MC Real TV as well. Demonetized and, and well shadow banned. So please make sure you're subscribing when you're watching those channels. And hitting a like button. Um, we say fuck the fucking state, the, the racist state of apartheid Israel and Zionism as an, a racist ideology. Mm. Fuck them, free Palestine, stop the genocide, free the Congo, free Sudan, free the Tigri, free Ogaden, free anywhere where people are oppressed. We stand with them, we say it with our fucking full chest on here, and free the people of, 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 of Lebanon against the Zionist threat and the bombing and the people of Syria as well. And Iran, who are getting targeted Iran. by these Zionists. So, yeah, big up to all those who are resisting Zionist domination and Western domination in that part of the world. Big up, resist, resist is the only way that these people understand. And if you want to come at me, how you want to come at me and wherever, come at me because I am speaking the truth, people. I'm speaking the truth. Israel is a Zionist, racist, apartheid state that's genociding Palestinians in Gaza and have been ethnically cleansing the Palestinian for 75 fucking years. Go and educate yourselves, you morons. Want to come on here or come on the chat or come at me on Twitter. Educate yourselves, you fools. Peace, love, light, win, lose, draw, glazes out, Jim the fucking Peace. and Ineos can fuck themselves as well with all this <laughs> piss state that they're doing, all this propaganda. And I'm glad that it, I'm glad that the Qatar have come out and said they need to correct the fucking record because they said they had the money and they could prove. And the Athletic, the boys who were against them, have now put an article out saying, yeah, they have proof of the funds. Yes, they which did. was the bullshit propaganda by Ineos and the fucking Glazers because they never wanted to fucking sell the club like we said fully. So fuck yeah, them. they took us to the cleaners. Yeah, big up to everybody. Big up to all of you, Therapy Army Army chat. Make sure you check out. Man UFC Realist TV and Jarvis Corner at 9 o'clock tomorrow. tomorrow is a good watch. Take care. Love and light, people. Up. Look after yourselves. Peace. Peace. Fuck Zionist. Yeah, good night. Fuck it is the, the only way. Fuck the